Hello everybody, welcome to the next Twitch interview. Okay everybody, here I am with Kai Tally. What up? This is my next Twitch interview. Uh, he is an awesome streamer. He streams uh games and some others. I don't know what else. <laughs> Everything, any any games, fighting games, um, Rocket, Rocket League, whatever you call that, racing, soccer game. I don't know. Yeah, Rocket Basically, League. Almost everything. Okay. Uh, first question: When did you first get into gaming? I first started gaming when I was like four years old. The very first game I played was uh, Street Fighter, the very first Street Fighter game on PC. It's like, it was hella old, hella archaic. It was like, all it was was like lines on the screen. That was Ryu. I remember that. It was Ryu versus something called Bison. And he beat me every single time. <laughs> it was frustrating, but it was fun. I'm like, dude, this is pretty cool. I, I enjoy this. And then I started getting into arcades, actual arcades. I was like five or six years old. I played Arkanoid and Dig Dug, Pac-Man, you know, all those games before people's times. Back in the uh, in eighty, uh, I want to say 90, 95. and then played first ever Mortal Kombat. After that, I'm like, you know what? I love games. Games have evolved. Great, great grass, my goodness, wow. So, yeah, of my my evolution of gaming. <laughs> great answers, dude. Uh, why did you start Twitch? Hmm, why did I start Twitch? Um, I watched. Tw well, I watched Justin TV. That's how, you know, season I am. Watch Justin TV um, for the game tournaments for Evo. 20. The first one I watched was Evo 2008 when I was in college. Loved it. I actually didn't have a Twitter. I didn't like Twitter. But I'm like, you know what? In order to talk on with my, my people in the, in, the, in the chat room, you had to have a Twitter. It's like, whatever. I, I made a Twitter. I, it was my, my first last name. Wasn't Catality yet, and I enjoyed it. And then I saw some other people doing it, like trimming games other than uh, fighting games. It's kind of grainy, but it's still fun to hear them talk about, you know, their experience with the games. And then it wasn't until like got until it was 2010 or 20 no 2010 when I saw more and more streamers playing games that were kind of fun. And then Justin TV is gone. It, it left in 2013, became Twitch. And that's when the explosion happened. Everybody was playing games. You know, Maneverse Game was and Maneverse Game and Bacon Donut were the first two I saw were really, really cool. They had great personalities. Maneverse Game was a big personality. Um, Bacon Donut was like laid back, didn't curse at all. So I'm like, you know what? I don't do that either. One of these days I might want to do that. Funny story is that I didn't start Twitch until I got robbed <laughs> in my in my, my old apartment. Wow. So I, Sorry I used to, yeah, to, I used to play. Ah, that's cool. That's right. It's a good story. I used to play video games every day. I played my 360 and PS4, PS3. Um, and then I just watched Twitch at night because I was like, in a bigger rut in my, my work and whatever in my life. And I'm like, the only thing I really calmed me down and like made me happy was great games and Twitch. You know, Mavis Game, they could done it, other people. So then one day I came home and there was not I, I came home. My same routine. My PS3 is in my my um, living room. My 360 in my room, and my laptop on my bed. And I came home. There's no PS3 on the on the floor. There's no 360 in my, my bedroom, and there's no laptop on my, on my bed. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? So someone came in and ransacked my room, took my 360, all my games, my PS3 games, my laptop, my laptop, all of them are gone. So I had nothing for like what three months. So I was watched, you know, Twitch on my phone. You know, my Wi-Fi was kind of a little janky, didn't really work as well, so I couldn't really watch Twitch for that long. I'm like, you know what, one of these days I might want to try it out. I put in a claim for insurance. Uh, insurance gave me a thousand bucks or so, and I'm like, dude, this is enough to get a good PC. And then that time happened to be the summer time, so I bought a crap load of games on Steam, like 50 games. Uh, first one I bought was Isaac, The Binding of Isaac, which was my first game I played. And I, I bought a gaming PC, bought some uh, dual, dual monitors for my friends at work, um, and I bought a controller, I bought uh, my nice lovely rig I got here, my 
760 GTX, which was like the best thing in the world at the time, three years ago. And I thought, you know, let's try this out. Tried it out. Got zero. No people came in my stream for like two weeks. I'm like, okay, this is tougher than I thought. I thought I'd put it on and it would come inside and no. I no know one that. for two weeks. <clears throat> I know that feeling. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they always say that. Like, everyone says, says like, it, oh, it was such a zero. I'm like, really? I thought the biggest streamers just came in and played games and they got all kinds of viewers. No. All zero. That's all I have. So I got my very first follower in my third week. Funny thing is, my very first follower was my biggest troll. And he almost made me stop playing games on Twitch because of what he was saying. Like, there's no one in my stream yet. What's going on with you? What's wrong with you, Kytality? Uh, it was horrible. But I'm like, you know what? Just keep pushing on. And then one day, I almost quit streaming altogether. I'm like, you know what? It's not working for me. Three weeks, two followers. You know, no one's coming in. As often as I wanted to, I'm going to stop altogether. I'm done. So I go, I'm like, you know what? Before I stop streaming, let me go to one more person's stream. Hang out with them, talk to them, see what's going on with them, and then leave. I'll become a viewer again. And that guy, his name is Benny, or B -B -B Benny in the Jets, he's the one that got me back in the streaming. Like, him and his friends, what happened was I was watching him on, on uh, playing Final Fantasy VII, like a speed run, no healing, no saving, and he beat, like, like two big bosses, were really difficult bosses, but you have to, you know, level up for. He didn't do that. Wow. He had, like, a last-minute, last-second, you know, one more life. When I hit my spider boss, he's dead. He wins a guy. He goes crazy. Everyone in the chat is going crazy. I'm like, dude, I got to give this guy five bucks. Give him five bucks. And apparently it's his very first donation ever. On Twitch. And funny thing is, he almost quit too because he had no one who came and watched him. But that was the one stream that everyone came in to watch him. His awesome mod who knew other people on, on Twitch, other big streamers. They asked me, do you stream too? I'm like, yeah. yeah. And that used to, like used to, try to get, we'll come, like fine, whatever. So I streamed again the next day. Vinny came, Spookers came, and like three other bigger streamers came that they know and watched me. And then they said, This guy's pretty cool. So I just, you know, chatted me out, got all the followers. From there, I just became, I just rolled and got like 50, 100. And my next month, I got 500. January, I got 600. And then February, I got like 800. It was crazy. <laughs> So like from so pretty much beating the Jets and Fuka is made Katsuki continue straight. So that's what happened. You're getting me jealous here, dude. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm glad I met that guy. I'm glad I met Benny and Fuka and them because I would have just been like, nah, I'm done with the trimming. I'm done. It was a dream, but not a dream anymore. But it was good. I'm glad it, it all turned out well for you, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Was it hard trying to figure out what kind of games you wanted to stream for your channel? Uh, yeah, there's so many good games out there. And I watch a lot of uh, YouTube and, a lot, well, first a lot of Twitch because I want to see how you tw how people stream and how you manage chat and game, whatever. I'm like, I need to stream a game that's easy to stream and read chat at the same time. I don't want to stream a game where I have to think on the game so much where, where chat's, you know, ignored. It's not good. You can't create a channel that way. I watch a Twitch, um, I watch YouTube channels, what games to stream for the very first maybe, maybe beginning. I'm like, huh, I said Borderlands, Me Boy, Isaac. I'm like, you know, Isaac is cool. I like Isaac. It's weird. I haven't played a roguelike before it is really in a long weird. time, so. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's, really, it's one of those really weird games. I'm like, I don't know what the storyline is. It's funny. It's quirky. It's kind of dark, dark funny. I'm like, I will just try it out. Whatever. And the controls are easy, the ASD, up, down, left, right. I'm like, E to shoot. I'm like, that's an easy game to play. Okay, fine, I'll try it. Well, I know that time was when, like, I think 10 or so people were playing it. It was kind of self but not really popular. It grew popularity right when I started playing it. So then people started coming on stream more often that wanted to play it. And I was pro was going to beat the game. I couldn't really beat the game that often, but when I did, the people went crazy, and then the followers happened here and there, left and right. So that was really. I would love to play that game when it came out, at the time it did, with its popularity. And those, I was between that one or Borderlands 1. And Borderlands 1 was one of those games I needed to put on my PC, but I didn't have money for it. That's why Isaac was cheap. It was like 10 bucks. Borderlands 1 was like, what, 60? I'm like, nah, I can't pay for that. And stream same time. It's too, much, it's too expensive for my blood. 
but it wasn't that difficult to choose Isaac because the first time I played it and beat the game, I got the hang of it. I'm like, this is my game. The first two months I played Isaac. I loved it. And then FNAF came out. I didn't know about that game. My friends and chat was like, dude, you should play FNAF. I'm like, what is it? It's like an indie game. You like indies, right? I'm like, I love indies. Play it. I'm like, it looks weird. It's a scary game. You're in a little confined space and you're opening doors for it. Deadly animatronics look stupid. Oh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, yeah. I'm like, let's, let's play it. Like, ah, fine, I'll play it, play it, play it. Play it the first time, and I loved it. In the next eight months, I played uh, Five Nights at Freddy's games. Non-stop, back to back to back to back to back. So, yeah. Uh, did it, did it uh, say something real quick. Hello. Okay, your voice for a minute for a sec. Oh, okay. Wait, like I said, um, when you first start streaming, when you first start streaming, I recommend you playing a game that's fun, not only fun, but people will see and search for, which was Isaac and F and F. Um, Starbound, Borderlands. And those are like the big ones that people were searching for and looking for to watch people play. And they were new. Which is kind of was pretty cool. To so it was kind of easy to, to learn about and to play, I guess. Uh, who was it that inspired you to become a streamer? Uh, like I said, uh, I've done it and Man vs. Game. Like, I told them, it's like, I, want, I, I didn't think we've done it yet. I want to meet him this year at TwitchCon. I don't know if it's, it's pretty cool. In his T-Pub. But uh, my first game, I watched it. I watched it. I played a lot of Dark Souls. I tried Dark Souls out. I'm like, I didn't like it because I kept dying. I'm like, who on Twitch knows how to play this game very well? Like, go on Twitch, search for Dark Souls, players, and I see my first game is one. It's like the biggest one. I'm like, who's this guy? Long hair. At the time, he was like, long hair, glasses. I'm like, that's pretty cool. And it was before I even started streaming. After I bought my PC. And I'd watch them every night, play Dark Souls, and play along with them. I'm like, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Pretty cool, okay? And I actually got farther in the game through his tactics, to what he does. I want to run through the game. He's very patient. And he builds his character up, and he's very funny. He with the boss battles, kind of salty, but funny. Salty, like, he, he laughs at himself. Like, he'll yell and curse and whatever, but he laughs at himself. He enjoys it. And else enjoys streams. So I'm like, you know what? And plus, I think the glasses I got from him, because he used to wear glasses when he streamed. And I'm like, you know, I want to be kind of him with the big personality, show myself off in the world, and big, big on it, to where he's kind of friendly, he doesn't curse, he's, and he, I, want to, I want to get the closest to the to like a high five. Every time someone follows him or subs him, he high fives the camera. I'm like, you know what can I do to the high five of the camera? I'll just this one, one of these. <laughs> why not? And that was before I didn't. And people do say this when I first started streaming. I'm like, why do you punch the camera? I'm like, because I'm full. I inspired by Bank and Donut, who high fives the camera. It's like, I sure wasn't PewDiePie. I'm like, no, it wasn't PewDiePie. I promise he wasn't PewDiePie because <laughs> I know who PewDiePie was when I first started streaming. I didn't know who he was. I never watched his videos. I never was, I heard his music one time. I didn't like it. I'm like, I don't like that music. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I'm not going to watch his videos. I just won't. So it was my big, he was my cup of tea. But yeah, I followed and I followed Man vs. Game. Those two guys who made me want to do it. And I told Man vs. Game when I, when I met him at TwitchCon the first year that I started getting into this because of you. And he's one of the nicest people ever. Very nice. We had a good 20 minute conversation. Pictures, autographs, all that stuff. I have an autographed um, game former in my room still, just sitting there. No. But yeah, those two guys are the ones that made me want to do it. And I'm glad I met them. I'm glad I, you know, I'm doing it. And hopefully one day I'm like on the broadcast alley, you know, meeting fans, all the cool stuff. So yeah. Okay, next question. What kind of video games do you like? Uh, oh, I like indie games. I love love indie games. Indie games are horror games. It's because the and it's pretty pretty funny. Like the first couple of games I started playing. Or Indian horror. Indian Isaac was a horror game as well. 
and Pilots of Freddy's, which is a horror game in the indie, indie game. Because the thing about any game is that, like, they can tell a great, great broad story. They can they can like, talk about anything. They can talk about illness. Illness. They can talk about um, loss. They can go. They can talk about um, family ties. They can talk about death in like a personal way. Uh, they're kind of they're true expressions of the developer developer themselves onto the game the gaming canvas. Like, you know, the big games are fun too. You know, you get your uh, Call of Duties and whatever, but those games can, I don't think they can tell those kind of stories that Andy's can tell. Like they can really be, they go in with their characters, with their storylines, and the gameplay is always innovative. Like I played one game that's like I think it's called Monochrome or, or Mono something, where you're, you're a four player game, each person is assigned a bank job for a heist, and they have to go through a certain route to knock out knock out the uh, the guards, take out the cameras, get the money. Distract the, the citizens and then make out for the money. Like that's that, that game was one of the funnest games I played. And they got Isaac, of course, F and F with the crazy animatronics that are deep in lore. I mean, that game alone, simple game, but it's like it's so it has so much like story to it, and it's still a mystery. No one knows what's going on in the game, so I love it. So I felt that I do feel feel this way that indie games tell better stories than AAA titles ever will. And you've seen that now, like. Two three years in a row, we see like more indie games are winning title, winning uh, game awards than the big boys are, because it's they dive deeper, they go further, they cross more lines that that it, big titles can't do. I'm actually but I do surprised love, like, by that. You know, fighting games. So what? I'm actually surprised that those kind of games like Five Nights and Freddy's is like getting more popular than these actual big games like Final Fantasy 15, for example. Yeah, that's that's true. Because I just feel like it's people like are I mean, gamers speak. Gamers are, are, aren't um, will show you their loyalty for what they love, and they love games that actually pull them in. Like I've had more emotional ties to characters than any games. Like Telltale's uh, The Walking Dead, one of the best games I've ever played in my life, ever in my life. Than like you know a AAA title. Although Last of Us was one that actually said this is a really good game. And Bioshock, Infinite, and Bioshock, great games, love them. However, I have more games I, I, that I've like really been pulled. I mean, my heartstrings been pulled. Unravel, uh, Valiant Hearts, Telltale games that I really recognize with, you know, that I am pulled towards. So, and of course, fighting games are my my first love with fighting games. Love fighting games, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Tekken. Um, Soul Calibur, I used to play. I play those all the time with my friends, uh, on in the summertime, for hours on end, like four or five hours, like little mini tournaments. We had a lot of salts, a lot of fun, a lot of bonding. But so yeah, if I can choose three types: indie, horror, fighting games. Love them. In my opinion, the best games are like the Tales of series, like Tales of Symphonia, Tales of the Abyss. Yeah. Like, very long storylines, but, like, lots and lots of places to explore, and, like, great abilities that your characters can get. Yeah. Those are some of the best games. One. Like, Tales of Symphonia is the last one I played on GameCube. That one was beautiful. Like, JRPGs are just... I said the Japanese, uh, the Eastern market has great games, great RPG games. That mm -hmm. they actually love to build their characters... What, like one scene at a time. They don't just like rush it out. Like have to take their time to say this guy is that him and her and this is why he fights, this is why she fights, this is why that guy fights. The little kid looks up to him and the parents uh, approve. Like it's it's a great story that, that weaves together each character's story of why they're doing what they're doing. You know, they go in the markets, talk to different characters. Like Shed Muse one that's really good. Shed Muse is a great JRPG game. My goodness. Can't wait till the third one comes out. But yeah, Tales of Tales of series is it's like a long series of great games. I agree. <clears throat> okay, what advice would you give to starter streamers? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, be ready to work your ass off. That's the one they all say to you. It's fun. Now, I'm gonna wrong. Streaming is fun. I love streaming. But be ready to work hard. I see a lot of new streamers who, like, they, they really want to play play games, really want to grow a community, but they move too fast. 
Um, take your time. Uh, get to know people. It's a network. Okay, Twitch is a big network. You go to you play games. Uh, it's all about networking, marketing, and giving value. That's what it, that's what it's about. So network as in go with different streamers you like at, at your level. Like say you are just started streaming, you uh, advertise yourself on Twitter, uh, Steam, Facebook, every before every stream, Discord. For every stream, you say, "Hey guys," or have a funny title and say your your name, what your name is, your Twitch handle every single time free stream. And you start to get traction here, five, say five, ten people in your stream. So if you have five people who watch you all the time, go somewhere uh, in uh, Twitch games, browse Twitch games, go to a streamer that has five people or ten people watching him, and start talking to him or her, and get to know them. Really get to know the community. Give value to the community. Host them uh, if you want. Tip them if you have money for it. Um, but get to know their their mods, their regulars, them, and shout them out too. And Twitter, or and and your net in your networks, merge your network, your community with their community, for like months or so, and then go to another person, another person. Keep doing that over and over and over again, but do it out of your own heart, not because you want to be popular. This site's not about like focusing on money and popularity. It's about focusing on how to get someone else up. That's what it's about. How to put your community in their community, and vice versa, and how to. Uh, make sure the next person you're talking to feels better. Like always, leave the, the, the community you you're with better than when you when you left when you got there. Always do that. Always try to make the person laugh, smile. Someone in the chat was talking about you know his birthday. Focus on them. That's their that's their that's their day for you. Uh, if someone says there something happened bad, ask them why. If it's a streamer who's feeling bad, try 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 cheering them up. So um, also be self aware. Like know and Focus on your stream. Like, watch the stream back. I've seen people who who play games online on Twitch who will stream and say, "I'm not getting the kind of uh, viewership I want or follows I want." I'm like, okay, let me, let me watch the stream. I will follow them. Yeah, I do follow you guys and watch your guys' streams. By the way, I do it a lot, and I watch you guys and I see so, so every five seconds like stops and stops and stops. Like, dude, I ask them, "Do you watch the streams back?" I'm like, "No, I don't watch my streams back, but do it." Please do it because and you should watch unless... your stream while uh, you're streaming. Like, for example, <clears throat> I have my stream playing on my phone, and I listen to it through one of my ears, like while yeah. I talk through my headset on my right. Yeah, exactly, and that that's the best thing to do because if you if you're looking at your stream, and I, I have my stream up on XSplit while while I stream to you guys, I have one game XSplit and all of my stuff, my uh, alerts. So at all times I see what's going on. If I see myself freeze or jittery, I will stop everything. Like, hey guys, you see that? Sorry. Anyone else see the thing jittery? And I'll keep going. Because if you just stream blind, then you don't know that you that the whole stream is messing up or your internet's not as high quality. Make sure your internet is at least 50 Mbps or more. To have a, because people want to watch smooth streams, even if it's grainy, if it's smooth, and you can they can hear you and see you. That's good too. Plus, oh yes, please, 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 at least get a microphone. Yes, you can. You can afford it. Yes, you can. I I, I know people who play new games who are, who are new streamers. Set aside the budget for new games. Don't play new games for right now. Get a microphone and good internet. That's two things you really need because Twitch is about interaction. YouTube is is they're, they're kind of getting there, but they're more like putting videos up there like let's plays. You don't have to have any microphone. Just have good gameplay, but for Twitch, there's two million plus streamers on Twitch. Probably three million now. Um, after TwitchCon two, you have to differentiate, like, differ yourself from everyone else on Twitch by your personality. Like you need to talk to people, you need to interact. I know it's scary, I know it's weird, I know it's strange, but yes, keep talking. That's another one. Don't talk, don't stop talking. Just keep <laughs> talking. When you, yeah. first, when you first pull, pull your stream up, keep just talk. Even What's if there's the no viewers in there, you should still talk. Even if there's no one there, keep talking. And it, it seems weird. Yes, it does. But you tell, you talk and talk and talk and talk. If you think you've not talked enough, keep talking. Talk some more. Yeah, just keep talking. think of something, even if it's not re related to the game you're streaming. Just try and keep like coming up conversations. And also, I, 
you should definitely be inter interactive with your viewers. I love yes. interacting with my viewers and like starting conversations yeah. with them, getting to know them and that stuff. Yeah, Becoming exactly. Becoming friends. They're your, they're your friends. Become your second family in a way because I do feel like my community is my, my second family. I love my community. They're funny. They're uplifting. They're very nice. And the other thing is the community does reflect who you are as a person. If you like, if you accept certain people in your stream, uh, and I see that a lot with small streamers, like they have people who like will not will be something they don't want to talk to in real life, who are rude or weird, but they follow them, they they'll accept it. Trust me when I say this: build your community the way you want to to reflect who you are. Like I've had people in my community when I was smaller, I did that. I did you know talk to people who are kind of rude or curse a lot and whatnot. I'm like, eh, they're following me. I, I get views. I'm fine. After a while, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, they're not they're not part of my 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 whole like my vision for my community. I want my community to be nice, uplifting, cool, you know, dorky, have tell funny <laughs> bad puns and make everyone laugh and smile, you know, hugs and all that good stuff, high fives. And some of the people weren't doing that. So they didn't stay around. You know, they're gone, they're banned, Psh, vanished. <laughs> but like take your time, um, ask questions. Watch videos on YouTube about how to become a streamer, about best advice. Write it down. Practice. That's one thing you don't, you don't hear. Practice. Like, pull up your stream. Uh, if you have OBS or Xbox, whatever you use to, to stream, don't go live yet, but record yourself playing the game and talking. Just talking. Record yourself. Back to, and just watch it back again. If, it's, if you watch your own stream and it makes you laugh or makes you interested, there we go. That's what you need. That kind of magic, because I, I I I say things and I do things I think are funny, and I just do it. But like, it's kind of strange though at first. It's weird going on live. I know it's nerve wracking pressing that button for the first time, yeah. but <laughs> that's like that right there. If you, then you press that button, you are a streamer. I don't care if it's no one in your stream at all. You are a streamer. Yeah, that's yes, a so. huge step. Maybe you don't, don't do that. Maybe you don't take that step. Like they sit there like, do I want to do it? Do I want to? I don't know if I want to do it. Uh, 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 no. Next month, do it. Just, just do it. Just do it. Trust me. Yes, sir. Yes, it's scary, but you'll you'll find out about things about yourself you never knew was present. Like I didn't know that this was something I love to do. I don't want it to do for a living, but I do want to do it for a living one day. And I thank God that I fell upon it. And I watched the JTV all those years, and I watched Memphis Game and them all those years, and now I'm getting. I still learn more things every every month. Like I always learn more things and. To different, but and there it is. Try new things. Try new things. Don't get stale. Uh, don't get set on what you, uh, on um, one style of streaming. You know, try a, I don't know. Try a, an indie game. Like you try, you know. Games. Yeah, try like you know, try other games you haven't played before. Uh, do do like speed runs if you want to do speed runs. Uh, challenge some. Do dual streams. Great way to to build uh, a community and to get your community to know other people. By the way. Uh, Always advertise your stream before you go live, every single time. Uh, try to get a good um, schedule. Mine's kind of mine sucks, but right right now. Yeah. Uh, but like, try to get try, try I, to get a good schedule going. Yeah, I really don't have a schedule. I just stream at random times because I'm pretty much too uh, mainly focused on YouTube, but I am also focused on Twitch. Yeah. Okay. Which is good. I mean, unless you do, unless you do it. That's, that's that's fine. Like I know my I didn't have a schedule when I first started. I just started doing you know Mondays on Wednesdays, maybe on Thursdays, uh, sometimes on Saturdays, Sundays. But like if you get a certain time a block you have, like I say the the sweet spot is four hours, three to four hours at least four times a week. You know, three times a week, three to four hours. It's a great way to do it because if you stream like an hour and stop or half an hour stop. You're not gonna get a community that way. You can't. You, communities are built off of just pure grinding, networking, and good attitudes. And I give value before you receive it. Like I give value without expecting anything in return. Like host some money, give some money. Um, I don't know. I go to the community and make make them feel great about themselves. Shout them out. Post their stream on your uh, your Twitter, your Facebook. Say everyone come follow this person. He's awesome. You love someone, let them know, let the world know 
if you because you, if you're the one who gives the most value, everyone's gonna look to you like this guy's awesome. This guy's really cool. Like you didn't have to, you didn't have to do that, but you did. Why? Because they're cool. That's why. Because it's not a take community. Twitch is not a. For those, I've seen people do that before who go into the streams and you know they'll say I'm streaming right now. This is my my Twitch. Come see me right now. Don't do that. Don't advertise someone else's stream, please. Just be sure. Don't say you're your streamer, but host somebody if you like them. If you haven't seen them yes. before. Best way to let them know you stream. Uh, be patient. Work hard. Uh, slowly but surely build your community. Have a vision for what you want it to look like and follow that vision. Don't compromise yourself and accept other people you don't want in your stream that you don't want there. It's not worth it. And make sure you have some really good mods. You know, best friends, if they sit in your stream and read chat and want to help you out, make them your mod, your mod. but just because they follow you, you know, don't make them your mod. Don't let them hard away. <laughs> uh, I have awesome mods now. Really cool mods right now. But I just make sure, yeah. And hit me up. Like, I do follow a lot of people. And I watch a lot of streams. And I promote, promote people, too. I do. I make sure people know who you are if you do a great job. So if you're doing a great job, make me laugh. You have good material. And play awesome games you love. Play games you love. And that are searchable. Like, if you have like Dungeon Ninja Warrior 5 and no one's playing it on Twitch, play it on your off time. Don't play it on Twitch. But mm. if you love games like, you know, Super Meat Boy, Tomb Raider, if you're, if you're a rabid fan of, like, Tomb Raider runs, if that game is popular, it always will be popular, play that game like crazy, mm. and then you'll see your, your community grow. Play one game for a month straight That's everyone loves to, to watch and you love to play. And you'll see what happens. Yeah. Like, like figure, out, yeah. figure out the kind of game that gets you the most views. Right, right. A game that's like, oh, popular and play it. But I'm saying pick a game that, like, you see like five to ten people who are playing it right now. The top guy's playing it probably has like, I don't know, 500 views. Bottom person has like five. And then play that game. If you love it, play that game for a while. Well, and get your community to know that game you're known for. And then, like, and then you'll see your community grow. And then go on to the next game. And then the next game. And then you'll see what happens to where you have like different games. Because like, I see people do sporadically, like play this popular game, League of Legends, or play, play Dota, or play Minecraft. If you're great at Minecraft, play it. Do it. That game's amazing. Uh. But League of Legends to Dota, I wouldn't recommend playing those games. Or really brand new games that come out like um, Final Fantasy XV and the Jess Kid. Just came out, but just came out. You know it's big, and you know every big streamer's playing it. Don't just, yeah. I say stay away from those games for a while. They're too hot. I call them. They're, too, they're hot games. Uh, it's hard to build a community around a game that's way too popular to stream because League of Legends has like four, what, four or five thousand, five thousand streamers playing the game at one time okay. every day, every day. And it's hard to scroll all the way down to your stream to watch you play. But then they can just watch, like, you know, someone who's at the top of the, at the league playing the game. That's why it's cool that we'll play games like five or ten people playing it. So they'd say, oh, this guy's cool. That guy's cool. Wow, I'm going to go. They'll, they'll go to your stream. If you play the game long enough, they'll go to your stream. Like, the top guy falls out. Everyone goes to the next person, next person, next person. Oh, look, you. Boom. If you impress them enough and talk to them enough, okay. you'll get there. Hey. Kai Tally, I, I mean no, I mean no disrespect, but I think we should get to the next question. We're already at thirty minutes, and I don't want to keep your fans waiting for your stream. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> it's not God, your fault, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, go ahead. Two more questions. Uh, what plans do you have for the future on Twitch? Um, I, my plans is to right now. I'll go to TwitchCon because TwitchCon's amazing. I love it. Uh, network more on TwitchCon. Make sure, um, like, st more staff um, knows who I am. Um, I'm making, I'm putting out a, um, a video uh, for Twitch Weekly, which Twitch Weekly is, like, every Friday at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, my time. They, they promote new stream, like three or four new streams, and, of course, talk about the big streamers. And th those are on the cusp of the partnership. They push them for people to watch. Uh, one of the best chats on Twitch, by the way. Of course, it is because Twitch owns it. Um... 
uh, I want to make sure they know who I am. So I'm going to make a video, publish it, post it, send it to them. If not, I'll do it every single Friday until I get <laughs> their attention. And when I go to TwitchCon, I'll let them know, hey, my name is Catality. I post, I send my TwitchCon, my Twitch weekly every week. Get to know their staff. Make, make sure they, they know who I am. Know, get to know more people in the community as well. Um, my ultimate goal is partnership this year, by the end of the year. I think I can do it if I work hard enough because I have a lot of plans for my, uh, what I call the finest of Frights Nights, which I play nothing but scary games for a week. And in February and October, we have... Um, some things for Valentine's Day I'm looking forward to. Uh, E3 is coming out in July. I'm going to go there again. I want to have a podcast in the future. Bring back Kai Bash because everyone's talking about it. And do some more stuff, uh, more uploads on Twitch and on YouTube this year. So that's, that's my whole plan. Great, dude. I hope, you, I hope you're able to achieve it. Yeah, thanks, dude. Like, are you happy with where you're at on Twitch? Do you feel like you've accomplished anything? I feel like last year was one of my best years. Like, I mean, since like the, when I first started, because that growth was crazy. Uh, I think last year was very, very fun because the first year when I started, everyone knows September is when everything goes down. I didn't know that, so I got I was kind of shocked and I was kind of sad and like, oh my god, my stream's dead. It wasn't dead. Just kids went back to sleep, school and work and travel more. And that's what it was. Happens all the time every September, but I, I knew, knowing that that what I knew for September lulls, I actually did my best work in September, October, November because those three months are tough to stream at. I'm like, you know what? They're tough days to stream. I'm gonna do more. I'm gonna do more in these, in these these months, and I did very well those months. Like I had a lot of people come in, new people, new streamers met me, met new streamers. Uh, my October is the best October I have had since I started playing the games on Twitch. So I thank my awesome people, for, my awesome fans, not fans, but followers for that. And the great people who uh, I know on, on Twitch, you know, partner streamers alike with the um, people at my level and a little above my level who, uh, who stream on, on Twitch for that. So I love where I am right now. I love that I have at least 30 or so viewers, I think. Uh, well, yeah, 30, 30 viewers. Um, I think that's my, my minimum now, my, 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 where I am right now. Yeah. I do want to get to like 50 or 60 because when they, when they get to 60 or so, that's when people pay attention. Like partnership pays attention more so to your stream. That's what she does. So I get there, 60 average, you know, often enough to where it's, it's like the, the normal, the norm for my stream. Yeah, and then I can flip with the partnership. But until then, I'm just going to keep working hard uh, this month, next month, and every other month after that to get to where I want to get, which is partnership. Ultimate goal is to be on Broadcaster Alley, which is the main alley people go to to wait in line to meet you, meet and greets. You know, I want to do that. Oh, that's right. Also, I'm gonna be on a pan- I want to be on a panel this year for TwitchCon uh, to help small streamers get grow the channel, get to know people, uh, what to do when they start, you know, get tips and tricks, that kind of stuff. So. Okay. Uh, that's all that uh, questions uh, like relates to Twitch. I'm just gonna want to ask one more question for our viewers just to get to know you a little more. Uh, sure. Like, do you watch any kind of anime? I, man, I watch a lot of anime. I watch, uh, let's see. I last one I watched was, uh, was Naruto Shippuden. I watched, um, Attack on Titan, season one. Amazing show. Um, I watched, my favorite anime I watched was Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. That one's like one of the best ever because the, mo- the motions are great, the characters are great. Every, I feel like every single episode is important, which it is. Um, Claymore, D. Gray Man. Uh, let's see, what else do I watch here? Elf and Laid. Uh, Kimiga Nozomi uh, A lot of Gundam. A lot of Gundam. Let's see. Um, mm-hmm. I watch a lot of Naruto Bleach. Of course, the popular ones. What about Dragon Ball one... Super? Oh, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. I watched Super. I haven't watched it yet. I, I want to. I want to try to. I'm gonna. Te- I'm until watching um, other anime before I watch that. Like Blue Exorcist. I want to finish that first, and then another second run through of Samurai Champloo. But after that, yeah, I watch Dragon Ball Super. I've watched Dragon Ball G, Dra- Dragon Ball GT, Dragon, which is weird. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z is the best one. Dragon Ball GT didn't happen. <laughs> that was like, not even canon, but 
it was, it was entertaining to watch because of Super Saiyan 4, G, Vegeta, and Goku, but it's just it's really so weird. It didn't really so, match with me. So far, it's uh, super but, fast. Yeah. I, I, I had to watch it. I watched the movies uh, with, with God Mode Goku and God Mode uh, Vegeta and God Mode Frieza. So I, I'll watch it probably next month. I have Netflix, so I might as well watch it, right? Okay. But yeah. I love anime. Love anime. Okay. Well, that is all the questions. Thank you for letting me interview you, man. Of course, dude. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, Patrick's awesome. He's a streamer. Please follow him and watch him. One of my awesome minions and big support of my stream. That's why this whole thing was happening right now. So thank you, Patrick, for having me here. And guys, if you want to come along and be a minion, twitch.tv slash kitality, K-I-T-A-L-I-T-Y. I'm on every Monday through Friday, uh, 7.30 PST. I don't know. You try to park, advertise probably. yourself on my <laughs> channel? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh my god, I break my own rule. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, dude. <laughs> but the guys I'm kidding. Being here. They're fantastic. Patrick, hope this goes viral. <laughs> and everyone, I'll leave the link to his Twitch channel in the description below. Okay. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all in the next video. Very much for you guys. Keep being awesome. Goodbye, everybody.